Hello everybody, this is your host Nino and tonight's experiment shall concern laser communication. When you think of it, lasers have been used for a long time to transmit messages. Just think of the movie Goldfinger where Bond is tied to a gold slab and about to be sliced in two which is just averted at the very last moment. Well, had Goldfinger not averted it, had he just simply shredded Bond, that would have sent quite a message, if you ask me. And in a similar vein, of course, we may remember the sort of message the Emperor sent through Alderaan. So, <laughs> we can say that at least has a lot of movie tradition, and perhaps also a couple of practical applications, which will be exactly what we shall concern ourselves with tonight. But before I get into the nitty gritty details, let me first introduce the Dramatis Personae. Now, uh, <laughs> first and foremost, it is of course the Arduino Nano, which you do not see right here, but I shall come to that in a moment. The most important element of laser communication evidently will be the laser. <laughs> now, this laser is a little more than a LED with directed output. It is very cheap too and therefore ideal for our experiments. It's nice to send a laser beam but we also have to be able to catch it somewhere which is what I use photoresistors for. Now these are certain elements of uh, sensor nature where if light shines on them their resistance varies and you can detect such variation and de determine thereby whether light is on or off. And that already gives you the basic elements of laser transmission. This shines onto that and we register whether there is light or not. Uh, you may even say that the simplest way of doing laser communication will be just, you know, morsing with a laser pointer where you just point it towards a target and point it away from it and thereby transmit signals. Now, <laughs> I wanted to make it a little bit more sophisticated though. So I decided essentially to put in this uh, photo resistor into sort of such a pen cap, right? Like it would be like inside there and the wires would be sticking out from it. And the whole thing I would be wrapping in tin foil, actually aluminum foil. But one particular element I would like to point your attention to in case you would like to repeat this experiment. If you take such foil, it has a glossy side and a rougher side. Now you wrap it with the glossy side and please take note that the cap itself is transparent but uh, not perfectly so. So when you shine a laser light into that the array is being scattered everywhere which intensifies your chance to to actually get a detection of the beam. So you don't have to hit that minuscule element exactly, but it is just sufficient to hit the cap somewhere uh, and that already will induce a suitable light change. So with that, we already have the main elements. A word perhaps further on the signaling itself. I discovered certain issues and you may very well stumble across them when you conduct your own experiments. First of all, the laser is fine, but these elements don't seem to generally be of who knows how high quality. Uh, and another issue you may face with them, and which certainly I have faced, is that they seem to have a certain cooldown time. Uh, that is a fraction of a second which needs to pass until a resistance has been adjusted to the present light conditions. That seems to be a not too short period, something along the lines of 50 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, something like that. And that, as you will soon see, severely limits transmission speed. 
The next point is how do you transmit bits? Well, that may sound a little easier in the first moment, but turns out to be pretty tricky when you try to implement it. First of all, it's not so simple as sending ones and zeros as in light, no light. Because the natural state of the laser is either to be on or off. So if you receive no light, it would, it would look like you receive a lot of zero bytes. But that just might not be the case because in reality it might be just that there is no transmission going on. Likewise, if the laser is just on and stuck somehow, uh, you will believe that you are receiving like 255, 255, 255 and so forth. But that would not be a correct assumption either. So instead of that, I went for a slightly more complex scheme where the transition of light to no light means one and the transition from no light to light means zero and only then bits are actually received. Trust me that scheme works better because that way you avoid the two base conditions of the laser to be either on or off and really go just for the changes of conditions which you may faithfully assume to carry information. Now one other issue I faced was when does a byte begin and when does a byte end? If you would just transmit bits, you know, how, how do you make sure that you don't take like uh, two bits of the previous byte and six bits of the next byte and declare that a received byte and thereby receiving gibberish? Well, I will tell you such synchronization problems turned out to be quite interesting as well. So instead of just simply transmitting the bits, I also have a begin and an ending of the byte. The begin of the byte being, uh, being a longer period of the laser being on and the end of each byte being a twice as long period of no transmission. And as soon as light is detected, the internal clock, like the delays with which the chip is operating, are synchronized to that and the receiving element is ready then to uh, time the receipt of the bits. Because that, that's also an issue. If a pulse, for instance, takes 100 milliseconds, how do you make sure that it is not overflowing somehow that on the one uh, detection segment you get 80 milliseconds of the pulse and in the other one 20 milliseconds and perhaps again mess up detection. So such issues when you try to establish such communication do pop up and uh, if you look into my messy code you will see that I had to deal with sort of all of them and they do make that sort of experiment a little bit more difficult. I am just naming them here in case you would like to repeat it and in case you um, come across them. Now in this box we are having two microcontrollers with two detection systems and each of them is being somehow connected to this carton box in order to have them point exactly towards each other. Now, this what you see here is exactly the tin foil wrapped around the pen cap with the resistor element inside. I'm not sure we'll be able to see it, but anyway, I'll aim to show it. So that's perhaps not too light, too easy to see, but in there is the one element, and in here would be the other one. I don't know whether you can see it now, but. Anyway, they're inside. So you can see this is also creating a little bit of shade, which is very useful in order to not have the whole thing be too much disturbed by ambient light. Now, this cap is connected to the to these sticks which are going through the um, box, but these sticks are really just used for fixation. They play no other active role in the experiment. Also affixed to the sticks are the lasers. The lasers are also here 
and and basically each laser points to each receiving element and that is how the two microcontrollers will be in touch with each other the main heroes of the evening are of course here don't be too modest my dear but i also don't want to unplug it <laughs> so there are two arduino nanos which are in control of this entire experiment now you will also notice that this one has some battery clip hanging out well that plays no functional role it is just there and i don't want to disconnect it same goes for the sd shield you know sometimes i make experiments which need an sd card this one doesn't but i also don't want to fuss around with miso mozi and what other connections there are uh, to be so don't pay attention to the battery clip and the sd card shield the entire coordination of everything just happens with the arduino uh, nano whose pins are connected on the one hand to the laser and on the other hand to the uh, receiving element thereby we are having the following connections. Perhaps I should explain it on this one as it is somewhat better visible. So the laser itself, so this is, this is, these are the wires from the laser, yeah? They are simply going to ground and D2. So D2 being like the plus connection and ground connect you the laser. And by making d2 high you turn on the laser right the other connection you're having is the photoresistor whose one end is let, let me let me show that end it is uh, this one here whose one end is connected to plus in this case plus 3.3 volt i took the 5 volt connection for the laser and then on that other end there is connected inside here a 10k resistor the wire after the connection is going to ground like the thing after the resistor is going to ground and the thing the wire before the resistor so just coming out and touching the um the, resi the resistor's own connector and and then comes a further 10k resistor here goes to a0 so a0 is where we shall be reading the photoresistors values and thereby you're having sender and receiver facing each other in each case and in a moment i shall demonstrate to you how this looks like in practice and how it works now i am having a lot of trouble with these little guys here given that they seem to be utterly unreliable like it's incredible what a bad quality of electronic part this truly seems to be in my case and <laughs> so if you experience issues with them don't be surprised you truly are not the only one now without further ado let me demonstrate to you how we can operate our laser modem, sort of. <laughs> See you in a moment. Now, the lasers are directed against each other and each is just lit up and lighting up the detector of the respective other one. So that is what the box really looks like. You notice that here this detector is on, as well as the laser light a little bit over over here, right? And you can all the same see also this detector lit up and this laser light. And if I like move my hand in the middle, you can see that on both ends the laser light is being reflected. So they are now not transmitting actually information, but they're just lighting up each other doing this sort of little exercise might be helpful if you wish to calibrate your lasers for light and darkness and that is exactly what is happening here so i have connected to the both serial ports to which these uh, arduinos are connected and the a0 pin 
is telling me what light intensity is being right now registered. Now, if I hold my hand in, the, in between in order to interrupt the flow, you notice that definitely the values are way under 400, perhaps even under, under 300. The reason why sometimes they are a little bit bigger is that the reflection on my hand itself is generating a little bit of light and that is something which the sensor can pick up. So that is why now if I move it further to the left you see that these lower values are decreasing as well because there the reflection is no longer that strong as it was when I was here and here you will see them getting stronger again. Right, so that gives you an idea of what a lit sensor and what a dark sensor should look like looking simply at the sheer numbers transmitted to us over the serial port. And using that knowledge, we can calibrate the sketch so that it registers light and dark correctly. In a future step, I might as well consider making that an automatic process, like just simply letting the system measure uh, intermittently the ambient light and decide for itself what shall be light or dark. But for the time being, this is just a manual adjustment. All right. <laughs> I'm having difficulties to focus on my screen or what? Anyway, you see things here. The calibration sketch itself is, by the way, extremely simple. It is really just that. You turn on the serial port, say what pin shall be used to activate the laser, say where you would like to read the input, turn on the laser, and then just print periodically what readings you have on the light sensor. In fact, if you have not yet connected laser and detector, you can play it even just with one microcontroller by pointing the laser towards its own detector. AVR dude done. Thank you. Oh well, thank you AVR dude. For now, the Arduino IDE has actually loaded the laser modem sketch <clears throat> onto each of the devices and they are ready to communicate. In fact, I just undertook a couple of tests which I shall now invite you to. So these are just... Come on here. These are just the two serial ports connected. Uh, one is being TTY uh, USB 0 and the other one is TTY USB 1. I did a couple of calibration tests and now they should be able to get uh, to get proper signals from each other. Hitting that sensor and not having things slip is a bit of an art, more than I thought so. But fortunately I have here one extra function to support me. Namely, when I press the hash sign, the laser is activated for 4 seconds. Hash. And now I can thereby see whether I'm hitting the target nicely. This does not otherwise transmit really information because for that the characteristic changes of ones and zeros are not implemented. Okay, let's try the other laser too. Again, hash sign. And <laughs> we're having a actually good target. Uh, good target um, allocation, like we, we are actually hitting it nicely and we should be able to greet each other now, so what shall we write here? Let's say Senatus Populusque Romanus, okay? And there we see uh, the target being illuminated 
by the laser. What you will notice that is interestingly lighting up is this little dot here just right behind the main entrance, so to say. Well, that little dot is a little bit of space around the exiting wire of the light sensor in order to avoid any contact between the tin foil and the wire. So I made there a little bit of space uh, and there we do not have tin foil so when you light it up it is it is appearing. However it seems it has miscalibrated itself again. For some reason that sensor is rather finicky. So I am having here the Senatus has not been properly transferred and the rest is also a little questionable, huh? let's call it that way. And if I try, however, from here to send to the other one, what will happen if I say, okay, control J, control M in order to get to the next line. So that transmission was only halfway successful. And let's say, quid, quid. Latine dictum altum videtur. Whatever you say in Latin sounds elated. Well, that transmission seems to be working nicely. Looks like I may need to work a little bit on the calibration of the other sensor. As you notice, uh, we are hitting here the target perhaps a little better than on the other half. But in principle, laser transmission through Arduino Nanos is working. Now there is a couple of things to notice here, namely the transmission is half duplex, not full duplex. In other words, each of these two Arduinos can only either send or receive, but not both. In order to receive full duplex communication, I believe the most sensible thing would be to simply use four Arduinos, each dedicated to either sending or receiving. Now, the issue is that any time we get a letter from the serial port which shall be transmitted, the entire byte is being sent, which means actually a lot of signaling is going on. <coughs> and during that time, <laughs> we're having here a couple of transmission errors too. And during that time, it is not possible for anything else to be transmitted. Also, I am having a little bit of an issue with actually targeting correctly the core of the sensors. And that is quite obvious here. As you know, these things somehow twist and turn just a little bit and then uh, letters are not received anymore with the proper intensities. So here, so to say, nothing happens. That's of course not very good, but these are a little bit of things which I can work on. I believe the main issue is actually having half duplex communication. And that is not really something I can that easily fix because transmission always takes quite a long time for any byte. Well, and... The trouble is, as I may have mentioned already, that I cannot just simply increase the transmitting speed. The thing is that the photoresistor is needing some time to cool off after having experienced the light change. And that is simply a fact of life, not something I can uh, change a big time. Now let's try another one. Huh? Let's just say Control J. 
control M. And now I took it, right? <laughs> if I say simply hello world, it is so far taking it. So there are still a couple of things to to improve in this experiment, but let's say it is properly practicable to an already interesting degree. And I hope thereby to have solved the issue of the guy on the island who was asking how shall he transmit information from it to the mainland. Uh, <laughs> in theory, that should actually be possible, perhaps with a more powerful laser, but the idea is, of course, always the same. And, of course, if you have ideas for improvement, I would like to further work on this, please let me know. I shall be all too pleased if someone finds this idea useful. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And from me, goodbye. While actually, you know what? Before actually really leaving, I shall leave with a salute to you. Let's press the hash sign here and the hash sign there. And so you have a fully illuminated laser salute. <laughs> Well, that's it really then. Have a great evening and goodbye.